Hey everyone, I got a great video for you today. We're gonna rebuild a Honda CR85. I want to give a big thanks to the folks over at WrenchRabbit who were kind enough to supply this complete all-in-one build kit for the CR85. Inside this is included virtually everything that you need to rebuild your engine. They have a piston, the crank, all the bearings that you need, all the seals that you need, all the gaskets that you need. In fact, it has double gaskets in a couple of places and double seals like for instance in the case of the water pump. So it's really a nice kit. It has everything in there that you're going to need. The price point is very attractive. So if you're trying to uh, you know, keep a budget or whatever while you're building a motor, this is a great way to go. So thanks to the guys over at Wrench Rabbit for supplying this and uh, let's build that CR85. All right, so now that we have both of these case halves completely cleaned and, and run across the surface plate, we're basically ready to start rebuilding this motor, and it's pretty exciting. So putting the motor back together is not very complicated. If you just follow the steps in like the service manual, it's pretty easy. Two things that you're going to need in order to do this job correctly are uh, assembly lubes, and this one is the liquid one. This is made by Maxima. And this one is the grease, basically. It's also made by Maxima. These things are excellent and you must have them in order to do this job correctly. All right, so the first thing you start with is the uh, slightly heated case. And then I put my crank in the freezer overnight. That way you can just kind of slide it in. It's still kind of a tight fit, but you can usually get it in there without too much difficulty. So then this is the main shaft set plates. These are to retain that bearing and these need some thread locker on them before you install them. Once you get those nice and tight, you're ready to install the transmission shafts. What goes in easier as a pair. Sometimes you gotta jiggle these things to get them into place, but it's not super difficult. Don't forget that there's washers on the top of both shafts. So do not forget those washers and the orientation of those washers is important too. So next is a shift drum, which is usually pretty easy to install. Now we're gonna start with the shift forks. There's two on this side, on the right side. You just kind of slide them into this groove and then pop them into that drum. It's pretty straightforward. They're labeled too, but they only go in one way. Slide in the pin and snap it and drive it home. Next you're working on the main shaft side, putting the shift fork in. And basically it's the same thing. You slide it in there, snap it into the groove of the drum, and pop in the pin. It's real easy. This is a little baffle, and I don't know what it's called, but don't forget it. All right, so we're moving into the uh, dowel pin side. So you need some anti-seize that's made specifically for aluminum and metal bonds. You don't want to have any kind of connection there, so this anti-seize is a great sort of um, system to make sure that these dowel pins don't get permanently affixed to the inside of these cases. So you can lube these case faces like this. You don't have to, but if you ever have to disassemble, it's nice to have the lube on those cases and you can rub the gasket or put the lube on the, on the material surface like that, like I did in the crankcase half. Either way is fine. So then set the dowel pins and you're ready to pull out the gasket, which we got from the great guys over at Wrench Rabbit. Drop that bad boy down, aligning it over those dowel pins. And I like to lube this shift drum and these pins that are related to the shift forks just because they interface with the other crankcase have when you're bolting them together. And I think it makes it a little simpler. So don't forget this breather. I can't tell you how many people forget to put that in. So put the breather in before you start to put the case halves together. So, all right, so snap the case halves together and align those pins and usually this is not too difficult to get these to go together. Next you have to use this crankcase puller installer system. The one that I use is made by Tusk and you can get them from most of the motorcycle shops like uh, Rocky Mountain ATV or Motosport or whatever. So you you tighten this, this uh, pin here basically or this uh, threaded rod with onto that nut and then you align the groove to this pin. So once that's aligned you just install the puller on top 
And then I like to use a clamp on the other side with wooden blocks to make sure that the case halves are going down flat on both sides, on the back and the front, because it's this puller installer thing. Sometimes, you know, we'll kink the cases or like bind them. So if you use both, you can squeeze the cases together more evenly, and I think it's less stress on the cases. So once you're done, you just remove the tool the same way it went on. Install your crankcase bolts, and don't forget there's three bolts inside this area where the ignition is. So tighten those down. There's 10. And you might notice there's one that has that little band on it in the lower left of the picture. That one is for the routing of the cables for the uh, carburetor. So tighten these down to the specification that you saw. I had a lot of fun putting together the two crankcase halves. Got that done. All these things are torqued down. By the way, the torque specification on these is not listed. Uh, directly in the manual, but it's between 8.8 .8 and 10 Newton meters. Uh, so just in case you're wondering about that, because the manual actually says tighten the crankcase bolts, uh, not very specific. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, next we're going to go on to this uh, cylinder and cylinder head. So that's the next installation. So the piston, the cylinder, and the cylinder head are going on next. So let's get to work. All right, so more dowel pins on the cylinder. And if you're going to service your cylinder, believe me, you're going to want to put the anti-seize on there. If you replace your piston or your piston rings, you need to have those things lubed. So the great guys over at Wrench Rabbit gave me a great kit for the new piston and ring. And you see this little mark here? That should face upward. It's kind of hard to see, so I pulled out this magnifying glass to try to help with that. But it aligns and straddles. The opening of the ring straddles this pin. So it's always a good idea to have more lube than too little, so I slime it up with some, some assembly lube and then just like I was mentioning earlier, align the opening of the piston ring with that pin and snap the ring on. Alright, so a little in bearing, some more assembly lube. And it's hard to show how these circlips go in, but you just kind of put one edge in and then you kind of push the other side in, but sometimes they want to slide around. So if you can get one edge in, you can kind of push the whole thing inside the hole there where the, where the wrist pin is, and then just kind of snap it into the groove inside the piston. Uh, it's just hard to, it's hard to depict and the manual doesn't have a very good picture of it either or I'd show it to you. So make sure you have a rag in here when you're using, when you're installing the circlips or you could drop a circlip inside to that bottom end and you would be crying after that. So, all right, so lubing up the piston to get ready to install the cylinder. Can't be too lubed up. And one thing you need to know when you put the cylinder onto the piston is don't twist the cylinder around. You know, go straight down with it. So install the gasket. Put some more of the uh, anti sleaze in those holes just to make sure that those dowel pins don't seize in there because they definitely will. And remember to straddle that pin with the piston ring. And it's usually not too difficult to get this to slide down, but straight down. As you torque down the cylinder, it'll seat a little bit better, but those dowel pins are such a close tolerance that they tend to not just allow the cylinder to like fall down all the way. So um, that is the clutch cable guide. And then afterward, you tighten this uh, cylinder down in crisscross pattern and then torque the specification you see there. Bam, all right, top and bottom and done. So I finished the cylinder and the cylinder head, got the bolts tightened up, got my clutch cable guide in. Oops, almost left that out. So uh, now we're basically ready to go to the, uh, the shifting mechanism. So the clutch, all the kickstart mechanisms, the drum and everything that goes right here, and also the water pump drive and so on that goes on this side. So basically we're, uh, we're done with the uh, bottom end and the top end and basically going to the ancillary parts, the side. So this is the right side and getting ready to tear it up. So let's go. All right, so this is the installation of the, what's called the stopper arm, and that long end of the spring there that's flat needs to go against that boss, and the book says to finger tighten this, so also they recommend after you put this pin in to push the stopper arm away with a wrench, but I just found it was easier to use my fingers. So this groove needs to align with the dowel pin that I just installed. 
push the stopper arm away and put the cam in, aligning that groove. Then release the stopper arm. This is called a center bolt and you don't see it in the picture but that actually has some thread locker on it and so install that and then torque it as specified. Then you are ready to torque down the stopper arm. I don't know why they ask you to wait to torque that down but they do. So next guide plate and pawls install. This is a little tricky. So there's a spring in there and a little chrome pin that needs to line into that groove. So just make sure that you don't have the pawl on the wrong side, that it lines up the way that it's depicted here. So uh, you'll be crying if you don't. So slide the guide plate over and gently release those pawls. One mistake I made is I did all this assembly over the motor. I do not recommend doing that. If those things fell apart and fell into one of the openings, you would be crying chasing those parts out. So align the guide plate and put some thread locker on there. Tighten those down. Next is the spindle. There's a, there's a washer that uh, goes in there too that I didn't really show very well, but there's a washer that's uh, part of this. So there's a pin there and that's a return spring and the return spring needs to straddle that pin. Then slide that plate over the shifter collar. Then this is the kickstart ratchet plate. Also needs some thread locker. I did not disassemble my kickstart, but if you do, you need to align the spline with that ratcheting device as shown in that picture. The book has a terrible image of that. So I want to tell you about this little pink sleeve that you see there before I install this spring into that hole. But that pink sleeve, see this? You've got to have that all the way down. So that needs to be, this is an incorrect installation here. It needs to be seated all the way down or the clutch cover case will not go down. So this idler gear has two channels here that you can see. And on the back side, it's smooth. So the correct orientation is with the two channels facing up. Kapow. Now it's clutch time. All right. So I just lube the sleeve up, but you don't really have to want to. So this thing is all going to be wet with fluid and stuff anyway. I don't know why I did that. So next are these two gears. So this is a, a primary gear and also the uh, gear for the water pump goes on there too. So there's a thrust washer that goes in the outer basket that you can see in the picture right on that spline. And then this washer has the words on it stamped out. So just make sure that's facing out. And this is the primary drive nut that in order to tighten, you have to wedge something in between the clutch basket and those gears. And I use a little nut that you uh, would use to tighten down the cylinder or the head. Works great. So after that, hold that in place and tighten to specification. Now with these clutch uh, plates themselves, I had a little trouble getting them to go in nicely this way. So I ended up just putting them on the, the inner basket first and they still were kind of a booger to get on there. One thing you should remember too is those clutch plates should be soaked overnight in transmission fluid. So then the center bolt goes on and this is kind of an unorthodox way to tighten this, but using the flywheel holder, I was able to uh, hold that that clutch assembly while I tighten it. So same kind of technique on the other side for tightening down all the spring plate and do that in several steps and bam you are done with the right side. Next is the ignition side. This is pretty straightforward. Just put in that grommet super easy snaps in and the exciter play actually is nice because it doesn't have any adjustment for timing so just bolt it back down. This is uh, some torques and just tighten that down. Now the Woodruff key you got to slide that in there and get it to line up with that groove. So I tried to show that as well as I could. And uh, sometimes it's a little tricky to get it to seat. But once you're done, you just put that thrust washer on and then the center bolt. And uh, you have to have the clutch puller in order to restrain the flywheel from spinning while you tighten that nut. So bam, you're done on this side too. Now the, this is kind of the home stretch. We're putting in the water pump, the impeller and the drive gear. Super simple installation. I go over the seal installation in another video which will be published here in just a few more days. So copper washer and this just spins on and I'll show you how to, how to tighten that later. I keep these little pins inside some tape. They go in these little holes right here. They're super small. You don't have to take those out but if you're going to leave them in, put some tape over them or something because if those things fell out it would be a drag to have to go find some new ones somewhere. So I pulled them out and then I'm just resetting them back in using the tools you see. All right, plunger arm time. 
install. This is the way the spring should look installed. I actually installed it incorrectly in this video. This is how it should look when it's done. And this is called a plunger arm piece. It's so funny, strange name, but that's the way it works. So you get that to go down, see it, or retracts. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now you're set. And again, I always like to lube up the faces of these cases before I install big pieces. And again, this has two dowel pins that need the anti-seize compound before you drop the gasket on. Pop in your dowel pins. and slime up the cases again with some grease. Again, you don't have to do it this way. You can rub your greasy fingers on this gasket and it works just as well. So I took a little bit of that, that anti-seize from one side and put it on the other and then now install the cover. Now, you have to twist the impeller of the water pump oftentimes to get those things to line up for the case have to go together or for the clutch cover face to go down. So in the picture, it's easier to see what I did here, but I was basically restraining the flywheel while I tightened down the impeller and then the gasket. One other interesting thing, this bolt here with the copper, that's the drain one, so that one goes in the bottommost portion of the water pump cover. So tighten those down to spec, and you're really getting close to the end now. This is the uh, main drain bolt, and just a couple few pieces left to go. This is the reed cage, and this return hose for the water system, or for the cooling system. In my case, this gasket was bi-directional, so you could put it in either way. And I didn't show the tightening of the two leftmost bolts of this manifold, but the, the ones on the right here are kind of a booger. So I thought you might want to see how they go in. You got to really relieve that hose and get it out of the way to tighten down the manifold. Next goes on this water pump hose, or this water hose, I should say, which is tighten it down. And then you may remember in my teardown video, I had to have heat and a hammer to get out this, this sleeve. So in order to make sure I don't have to deal with that ever again, if I rebuild this motor, I slime this thing up again with some anti-seize and slid it in on the home stretch now big time all right check that beauty out that is such a pretty motor i'm so proud of it i can't believe it's finally done this thing turned out absolutely amazing i cannot believe how beautiful this thing turned out so sniper gray and burnt bronze were the cerakote colors i have never cerakoted engine cases before but i talked to the folks at cerakote they assured me it's absolutely fine i used one of those uh, uh, air dry system, the C systems at Cerakote, so you can do the same thing at your house. It's no problem at all. But the engine turned out great. I hope you guys learned some special facts that you don't learn in the service manual on this video. Uh, also, again, want to thank the folks at Wrench Rabbit who were kind enough to supply the build kit for this job. And if you like the video, please subscribe. I need as many subscribers as I can get, so push the button below. I hope you like it. So, enjoyed working with you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and have fun in your garage.